Hey everyone, welcome back to Beekeeping with Natalie, or welcome to if you are new. Today we are in Tennessee and we are visiting Cayman Reynolds to film a couple videos with him and we're going to film some stuff and hopefully you will learn something from it. So we'll just kind of show you a little bit about what Cayman's doing right now and some of the things that he does and hopefully you enjoy it. What are we doing today? Well, in today's video we're going to set up a starter finisher for raising queens. We're going to be looking for the queen and trying to isolate her so we don't shake her into our starter finisher and then we're going to grab a lot of nurse bees and all kinds of stuff. So you've done this before, we're just going to do it a little bit differently because, well, you're doing it with me. So we're going to get into at least one colony or two. Well, I guess one colony kind of makes sense, doesn't it? We're going to probably get into a couple colonies, I would say. Try not to pull too many resources from a bunch of them. So we got a pretty nice looking hive right here. Getting a little bit on the strong side. I just added this second brood chamber about a week ago. So there's a flow going on. And first thing we want to do is make sure the queen's not up here. And I am not seeing her at all. So good deal. We'll set this up towards the front so they can walk back in if they need to. Wow. So if you'll grab some frames and I'll grab some frames. What I'd like to find is frames of bee bread and eggs or larvae where we can get a lot of nurse bees to shake off and hopefully find the queen so we can make this a lot faster. And we will also want a food frame as well. And wow, good bit of food right there. I haven't fed these things anything, so this is all new stuff. Oh, well, would you look at that? The foundation, plastic foundation must have come out when I put that comb in there, and it is now all kinds of funky. Fantastic. I wonder if we can fix that. So I am not seeing the queen on this, and... This is not the tip we were going for with the video. You ever had this happen before, Natalie? Yeah. Okay, good. All right, so the queen's not on that. We'll set that to the side. We can shake bees from that, no problem. I'm gonna hand you a frame here in a second, Natalie. I'll hand you this one right here. And you're gonna find the queen, aren't you? Cause, I'll try. Oh, good, good. I think, oh, I actually see her on the bottom of that one. And I also believe I, yep, there she is down right at the bottom on the end bar. And uh, look at these cells right here. When I added this box, they were pretty packed. And I don't think they're trying to swarm yet. Oh, there's an egg in that one. Oh, she's on the other side now. Do you want to mark the queen, Natalie? No, you can do it. Man, I was hoping you would do it. No pressure, queen. No pressure, no pressure. Yikes. I grabbed two bees at once and one of them was just about to get me. And this queen has done a really good job. But now we are going to grab her. Give her a nice yellow dot right there. All right, so we're in good shape right now. We know where the queen's at. And what we're gonna do is, you know, um, you, got, you got a clip on you? All right. Dawn should have joined the, uh, the scouts. She's, she's always prepared. <laughs> you know, the scouts are nothing compared to motherhood though. Right. All right, there we go. So we got the queen. 
she's in a shady spot and this is awesome because now we don't have to worry about shaking the queen in and we can do whatever we want <laughs> Ooh, there's a good bit of nectar coming out of that want to get a close up of this done nectar shake baby Woo! awesome it's called free food which we guys like that all right so this is basically all nectar as we're setting up these starter finishers we're going for frames that have larvae on them emerging bees or bee bread frames that will give us the highest concentration of nurse bees which is what we want older bees cannot produce royal jelly very good at all oh this is great i'm going to shake it off so you can see a little bit better and down in there you can just see all of these maybe you can see that eggs and larvae down in there and they've got a lot of honey packed up into the sides I think we're gonna have to go down if we're gonna get a lot more nurse bees excuse me move 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 this has got some bee bread on this side mostly honey again there must be a really good flow going on because like I said this box just went on less than two weeks ago got a nice frame of capped brood here the adjacent frame has quite a bit as well and look at that cell they're definitely thinking about swarming up yep, royal jelly down into there well it's a good thing we're doing what we're doing today I knew this one was kind of pushing a little bit I'm actually going to shake this one as well there's a lot of bee bread in here whenever we're setting up a colony for raising queens we don't want to give them larvae or eggs or they will raise their own and while this queen's doing a fantastic job this is not a queen that we have decided to breed from she hasn't been tested and proven all those things This one feels like there's probably eggs in it. Oh yeah. You can check this out, Don, real quick. All kinds of larvae and a little bit of eggs towards the outer edges. Oh, awesome. So this, yeah, it's just eggs and stuff on this side as well. Typically, the frames that have the most pollen and bee bread are going to be the frames either, typically a little bit in from the outside. So not quite the edges. There will be honey here, sometimes a little bit of bee bread, and most of it will be in here. That's not always the case, but that's the general rule of thumb. We'd really like to get some of that into this colony. Pollen and nutrition is critical to raising queens. However... This one's got capped brood. It does have a decent bit of pollen towards the outside. Not a lot of pollen on that frame. Whew, that is heavy. Yeah, that's just honey right there with a little bit of bee bread in it. It's capped on this side. Great nutrition going on right now. So here's a nice frame of capped brood. Really nice frame of capped brood. I don't see any eggs or larvae in this frame at all. I'm going to take this one. A fr deep frame will have a, over 6,000 cells in it. So if they've covered 
most of this like they have. We'll have almost 6,000 new bees come out here within the next 14 days. This will extend how many young bees we have long term. All right, so I'm going to stick this piece of foundation that's half comb in there in hopes that they'll finish it out. This is a frame of honey. This is a frame of brood. We don't want to keep that brood away from the rest of it, especially since we've pulled so many bees away from this colony. It's hot this time of the year, but still it takes a lot of work to keep that brood fed and the right temperature. So we'll stick this towards the edge and in hopes that they will draw, finish drawing that out the rest of the way. We are gonna put this hive together and go to another one because I don't wanna take too many bees from this hive. We could take more for sure, but I'd like to keep it a little bit stronger. I'm gonna put a super on it. And give them a little bit more room to move that honey out of the queen's laying space. And we are going to release this great queen. Wrong way. There we go. Woo! Windy today. Uh, so Natalie, um, what do you think of that Corey Stevens guy? It's good. It's fine. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, what do, you think? what do I think about Corey? I, I think he's an interesting fellow. I, I, kind of a, what I would call a interesting, like paradox almost. He's like an educated redneck, all wrapped up into one. I, I've never seen that before. I hope Corey watches this video. Hey, Corey. <laughs> Corey raises a lot of queens and breeder quality queens in misery. I mean, <clears throat> Missouri. Wow, good bit of honey coming in. You can see from the top, they have whitened up the wax. I threw this box on just a little bit before that last one. They have done a great job filling it up full of the good stuff. Good deal. This is loaded with eggs. Not a ton of bees on that frame though. You want to grab that one, Natalie? Yeah. So for those of you who are looking at this hive, this is time to either pull the bees back with the split. When you're in your second box and you're seeing this much capped honey around this much brood, or you need to give them more space. I gave this colony drawn comb, and so they filled it up really quickly. But if you only have foundations left to give them, then you need to get that on now. Find a frame of eggs like that one right there, pull that up into a box of foundation, and they'll draw it out a lot quicker because we have more honey flow on the way. And if we don't get combs or they you know, start drawing combs soon to put all these resources, it'll plug up all this area and they will definitely swarm. But good looking colony right here. Is the queen on that one, Natalie? No, I don't see her. You can just set it down if you'd like to. Does it matter where? Um, does it matter? Honestly, if you want to throw it back in kind of against the honey frame, that'd be all right. The outside frame? Yes, that is the one. Um, not seeing her on that one. They're doing a good job. But if you look 
and see that there's nectar down amongst where the brood is and that is going to cause some backfilling. They need more space. We still have sumac, we have basswood still. They're building a cup right here and that's going to continue until they swarm. Thankfully they're dry right now. Nothing on that one either? Mm -mm. Alrighty. Well, this queen might make us work for us. Uh, work, I can't say anything today. She might make us work for it today. I have to go down to that second box. You can just go ahead and stick that one back in too, Natalie, if you would like, or I'll do it for you. I'm right here, it's easier. Typically the queen's not on the outer frame, but sometimes they are. This one is not. I am going to just go ahead and, wow, that was a pretty good bit of nectar that came out of that one. Big nectar shakes today. The clover is really going at it right now. I imagine that's where a lot of this is coming from. That is pretty heavy. Whew. One of those frames I, has a lot of bee bread on it. I really want that one. You wanna take that one, Natalie? Here she is. What? There she is. Um, what do I do with that marking pen? Oh, there it is. All right, you wanna mark this one? No. You can do it. I don't like marking queens. She doesn't either. <laughs> Does anybody like marking queens? <laughs> Got her. So again, grab her by the thorax and be careful not to get her eyes. And hopefully you're more like Natalie and have slender fingers. You can actually put a marker tip between the two. <laughs> Maybe I should try the fine tip. This is the medium and it does a good job, but it's a little hard sometimes to get it done. All right, I think I'm just gonna release this one back in. There she goes. And now we can indiscriminately take from anything that we want from the top box and anything we have left out and we are good to go. All right, this has got eggs in it. Whew, lots of nectar there. I'll take that, Natalie. This has got just capped brood and a lot of bee bread. Look at all that diverse bee bread down into there. That's what we need to have to raise some good queens. There's fresh pollen coming in, but they need to have reserves. We'll also feed a pollen patty as well. And I'm not seeing any larvae to speak of. So we're just gonna take this whole frame. All right, four down. So, Natalie and I are taking a union break. 
<laughs> you don't even know what a union break is, do you? Mm -hmm. It's okay. It's good. <laughs> we know what a union break is, and beekeepers don't get union breaks, so back to work. But no, it's actually a pretty hot today, 90 degrees Fahrenheit. As you can see in this Apame hive, we have a good bit of bees. I have two frames of foundation. I have two frames of capped brood mixed in with a good bit of bee bread. Now what I want to do before we start raising queens is I'm not going to try to graft anything into this colony for about a day and a half to two days. And when I come back, I'm going to check all these combs and see, did I miss an egg or a larvae? And are they starting to raise their own queen? And then I will need to um, crush those so they will focus on the grafts that I put in from my breeder queens. Um, not all the time will they not draw years because there is one on the combs, but what can happen is since it's so much older is the virgin will emerge out of the one they draw on the comb and will go out and sting all of the grafts that you put in there. So we don't want any of that. And it's important to have the foundation frames because there's a honey flow going on. This is a strong bit of bees and we're fixing to add more. And so if we don't have those foundations, they will just pack this thing full of honey and we don't want it to become honey bound. So they'll consume that and draw some combs for us. And hey, who doesn't want some new combs anyways? But we want bee density. That's the number one thing that we need. And the reason I'm going through so many hives is I just don't want to take away from any one hive tremendously. Looks good. And we've got quite a bit of capped honey towards the top up here as well. I feel like the queen should be on this one. Oh my goodness, she is. You know, why can't it always be like that? All right, Natalie, this time you're marking. No. I did the first sure. two. You know, and I've, there's so many things in beekeeping, like some people say grab them by their legs. Some say to grab them by the wings and then mark them while you have the wings. But some beekeepers say don't grab them by the wings because their abdomen will curl around and sometimes they'll stick their stinger out and get themselves. I've never seen that, but I've heard some beekeepers say that happens. I usually just get them in one hand and then grab them by the thorax and just be really careful with those legs. And these MPD-15 pins are the best. They work much better than the Posca pins. Love that yellow dot and it dries so quickly. Made in America too. Uh, Don, how about that cage? I think I'll take it this time. We are just going to shake these bees out. And then if you guys want to see how the graphs do, you can see that on my YouTube channel. All right, three queens. Fantastic, see that's why I need to bring you along because yeah, I mean, a lot of times I just can't find these things. Not when I really need to, that's for sure. Lots of nectar. That is heavy. Can you both stop and look? This is another frame that's mostly just capped brood. I'm tempted just to throw this in there.
I'm just going to shake a bunch of bees off into there because I can. And I hate making these things light. All right. So this one's actually shorter frame. I remember when I threw this box on, I like to run tens in the brood chambers these days. I, I ran nine for many, many years. And I'm just, I've been going back to tens. I like having more room for the queen to lay. And uh, two, four, six, eight. And this one's now two frames short. I've got a frame of foundation I can give them. So in this case, I'm going to, this is all honey. This is all honey. And this one was all honey. So they got quite a bit of honey up in here. That's awesome. This has got some brood and larvae. I'm gonna stick this right in here. And if I had another foundation on me, I'd scoot these over and stick that in as well. And since this isn't brood, that won't hurt anything. We have shrank the population tremendously though. And it's getting in the 90s, so we don't have to worry about it too much. But if I was to cut these bees back this much in like late March, and then we get a night that drops down in 28 degrees Fahrenheit, there would definitely be some chilled brood up in this top box. We're just gonna run this queen in. I like to run the queens in the bottom. The top is pretty full and there's probably some laying room down below. I need to start carrying one of these around with me, I guess. There she goes. Man, I love that dot. We just need to add another frame or two. One of the things I like about this Apame or a hive like this is since it's all together and it's got handles, it's easy to move, but also it's got a removable bottom board. So it's got a screen. So if we're doing this and it gets to 95, 90, 100 degrees, get this strong hive, some extra ventilation. Bees will actually abscond from a hive and just leave if they, if they cannot control the temperature enough to keep the hive cool. So when you're really packing the bees into a hive like this, you definitely want to make sure they have enough ventilation. And then if you're doing it in a cold time of the year, it's nice to have the insulation on the sidewalls to also keep the sun from radiating in so much. So, well, we're just going to set this up. I'm going to add one more, um, just a drawn comb. We're going to put some frame feeders on this. I'm going to feed them, put a pollen patty in there. And then I'll let you know, Natalie and everybody else, how it works out here in an upcoming video on my channel.